top secret Airbus blueprints have suddenly surfaced, showing phrases like structural collapse and total replacement. And insiders are whispering about something far bigger than a routine upgrade, a classified initiative we'll call Project X, a program so radical it could force Airbus to rethink the future of the entire A320 family. None of this is officially confirmed. It is certainly worth investigating further. So what exactly is Project X? Why are engineers quietly calling it the most disruptive Airbus move in decades? Let's dive in. For years, Airbus dodged the real question. Investors, analysts, and journalists constantly asked, is a completely new narrow-body aircraft coming soon? And each time, the answer was a polished statement. The A320neo will last forever. However, that assurance grew increasingly fragile. And finally, the veil of secrecy lifted at a crucial press conference in Toulouse. When a veteran journalist questioned the CEO about whether Airbus was secretly evaluating a completely new narrow-body aircraft architecture, the CEO remained silent, longer than any shareholder or analyst could comfortably accept. His eyes darted around the room, searching for the safest version of the truth. That hesitation spoke volumes. Behind the optimism, engineers are facing problems that the incremental upgrade can no longer conceal. NG AC composite material fatigue. At high cycles, UDF acoustic instability, NLF thermal stress propagation, and a growing list of internal patents, including AI-based adaptive unloading and vibration control systems. These are not tools of a platform being expanded. They are the foundation of a platform being replaced. Yet Airbus continues to steer its public messaging toward the ambiguous themes of sustainability and operational efficiency, carefully managing expectations to avoid destabilizing existing A320neo orders. Internally, Management knows that the airframe is reaching its structural limits and no major improvements are possible after the late 20s. The strategy is clear. Maintain the illusion of a long lifespan while quietly preparing for a controlled fleet transition by 2030. So what are they really planning? Please support us by liking and subscribing to our channel to give us more motivation to explore new things about Airbus. On this journey, Thank you very much. Airbus has consistently maintained that no next-generation narrow-body aircraft program is under development. However, a closer look at what's happening inside their factories reveals a completely different story, one that only becomes truly clear when all the details are pieced together. Most notably, there's a quiet expansion of composite wing manufacturing facilities in the UK, Germany, and Spain. Airbus calls them flexible investments for the future, but the equipment moving in tells a different story. High pressure injection molding systems, automated carbon fiber placement robots, large autoclave drying tunnels, and state-of-the-art wingspan adjustment systems, all exceeding the technical requirements of the A320neo aluminum wing. These facilities are being prepared to produce ultra-high aspect ratio composite wings capable of reducing dynamic load, active torsional control, and utilizing continuously variable surfaces. No engineer believed this type of wing could be retrofitted to the A320neo. To use it, Airbus would have to redesign the entire fuselage from scratch. But that was just the first piece of the picture. In a series of behind-the-scenes videos, factory tours, and technical presentations, viewers discovered unlabeled aerodynamic prototypes deep sweep wings optimized for supersonic drag, elongated engine casings suitable for next-generation UDFS or hybrid electrics, twin-tail and V-tail designs never before seen on any Airbus model, and even fuselage forms with larger diameter-to-length ratios, suggesting a larger cabin or a new pressurized fuselage concept. These fleeting glimpses were often deliberately blurred, partially obscured, or only appeared in a few frames, but their aerodynamic characteristics were unlike any typical Airbus R&D program. Meanwhile, three major suppliers, Safran, Spirit Aerosystems, and Collins, were continuously posting contracts, 
engineering job openings and technical documents mentioning a next-generation narrow-body aircraft platform. The documents even described high-voltage systems, ultra-lightweight pylon composites, and engine mounting points far exceeding the size of the LEAP, or PW1100G. These specifications were only suitable for two engine types, next-generation open-rotor engines or high-efficiency turbofan engines, neither of which could be fitted to the A320neo. And at the heart of all this movement was a little-mentioned but crucial internal requirement, a 25 to 30 percent fuel economy improvement over the A320neo. No minor update could achieve this. It required an entirely new platform, a new fuselage design, new wings, new engines, and new materials. However, to the public, Airbus only released vague hints, blurry images in presentation slides, renders appearing for seconds, unannotated structural diagrams, and unnamed future concepts. This was no coincidence. These were controlled revelations, sufficient to prepare the supply chain, but not enough to cause market upheaval. If viewed individually, these clues might be seen as normal modernization projects. But when pieced together, from large-scale composite factories and unusual aerodynamic designs to supplier specifications and fuel efficiency targets that are unattainable through gradual improvements, a clear picture emerges. Airbus is quietly building a new aircraft program. Airbus may continue to deny it, but the infrastructure, partners, technology, and inadvertently leaked prototypes speak for themselves. The successor to the A320neo is no longer a question of whether or not, but when, and the evidence is becoming increasingly clear for those who observe. As Airbus moves closer to unveiling the successor to the A320, the company is at a technological crossroads, a turning point so crucial that its decision could shape not only its own future, but also the direction of the global aviation industry for the next 40 years. This isn't simply the launch of a new aircraft, it's the choice of one of three groundbreaking technologies that will propel commercial aviation into the mid-21st century. And whichever path Airbus chooses could be a historic breakthrough or the most costly mistake the industry has ever seen. The first option is the open frame fan engine, often called the open rotor engine, this is the most audacious redesign of commercial propulsion systems since the advent of the jet engine. Massive, unshielded propellers capable of reducing fuel consumption by 20 to 30 percent. Safran and GE have demonstrated this concept with experimental engines. But the hurdles are immense, controlling airport noise, preventing vibration fatigue over thousands of cycles, certifying the propulsion system without a protective casing, and finding a way to install such a massive engine under a low-drag aircraft wing. If Airbus chooses this path, it would be the most significant leap forward in narrow-body aircraft design in decades. The second approach focuses on super-elliptical composite wings, long, slender, flexible structures designed to twist, bend, and adapt throughout flight. By self-reshaping in real time, they could deliver aerodynamic performance far exceeding current wing types. But this technology comes with huge trade-offs, extreme root pressure, certification hurdles far beyond traditional testing, and the need to fabricate massive composite structures with unprecedented precision. The potential for efficiency is unparalleled, but only if Airbus can overcome the industry challenges behind it. A third possibility is a hydrogen hybrid architecture a combination of gas turbines, fuel cells, electric motors, and cryogenic hydrogen tanks. It promises near zero emissions, but requires an entirely new ecosystem of materials, airport infrastructure, global fuel supply chains, and safety standards that no narrow-body aircraft has ever tested. Each option could either give Airbus an edge over Boeing or cripple the entire program if chosen too early. And as the decisive moment approaches, one question becomes unavoidable. If you were Airbus and the future of aviation rested in your hands, which technology would you dare to bet on to shape the next 40 years of the industry? Share your thoughts in the comments below.
Behind the polished interviews, the artificial optimism, and the carefully managed press events, a far more intense conflict is unfolding between Airbus and Boeing, a conflict rarely seen by the public. This is not simply a competition for orders, but a risky battle for dominance in the narrow-body aircraft market, a market that will shape global aviation from the mid-20s to nearly 2080. In this invisible war, every strategic move carries consequences that could resonate for generations to come. For Boeing, the pressure is reaching a breaking point. The long-awaited NMA 2.0 project, positioned between the 737 and 787, continues to be developed in secrecy. Engineers are researching composite airframes inspired by the 787, advanced long swing wings, and engine system concepts ranging from next-generation geared turbofan engines to early hybrid systems. But leadership faces a dilemma. Act too early and risk a disastrous 787-style development, or act too late and see Airbus dominate the entire mid-range market before Boeing even finalizes the design. Airlines demand 20 to 25% performance increases. Regulators push for deeper emissions cuts, and leasing companies warn that the 737 MAX is nearing the limits of its upgrade potential. With each delay, Boeing's strategic window narrows. Meanwhile, Airbus is in a stronger position. The A320neo holds the advantage in orders, a stable supply chain, and engineering teams quietly preparing the next generation platform. If Airbus launches first, Boeing could face order suspensions, supplier investment diversions, and future regulations built upon Airbus's architecture, all before Boeing even chooses a design. In this silent showdown, every leak, patent, and refusal to comment becomes a clue. One wrong move, or one delayed action, could determine not only the next aircraft, but the next decade of the aviation industry. As Airbus moves closer to announcing its next major breakthrough, the company is essentially facing three different futures, each with the power to shape, enhance, or weaken its dominance in the commercial aviation industry. In the first potential future, dubbed the Revolution, Airbus commits to developing an entirely new narrow-body aircraft platform, incorporating advanced engine systems, next-generation aerodynamics, and lightweight construction into a single groundbreaking aircraft. Upon announcement, orders poured in, airlines accelerated fleet modernization plans, and the market braced for its potential entry into service around 2035 an event hailed as the biggest change in aviation since the original A320. But the second future, dubbed the Collapse, looms large behind each technical milestone. If engine manufacturers fail to deliver the required open-wing technology, if the ultra-flexible composite wings reveal dangerous vibration patterns, or if the hydrogen-ready systems cannot scale, the entire program could be stalled. Billions of dollars in investment evaporate confidence erodes, and Airbus is forced to rely on another round of A320 NEO modifications while Boeing regains strategic ground. Finally, there's the two-flight strategy, the boldest path of all. Airbus greenlights not just one, but two successor aircraft models, one running on advanced kerosene fuel for the 20s and a hydrogen-powered version for the mid-century. This dual approach gives them an advantage in every segment. Airlines get an efficient operating vehicle now, regulators get a zero-emission solution later, and Boeing faces an impossible battle on two fronts. In this scenario, Airbus would not only compete, but also dominate the next 40 years of the narrow-body aviation industry. Have a nice journey. Goodbye, and see you again.